praise be to Jesus Christ. Hello dear children. Hope all of you all are doing good. Let us begin with a prayer. God, our heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of life. Let your light glow in our minds and walking in your commandments, we may always follow you, our leader and our guide. Fill our hearts with joy, fill our minds with learning, fill us with your love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in the previous chapter, we learnt about sacraments. So what are sacraments? Yes, sacraments are visible symbols instituted by Christ and administered by the church that purify and empower us by giving us an invisible divine grace. How many sacraments are there? Yes, there are seven holy sacraments that are instituted by Christ. In the last session, we learned about a parable. Which one was that? Yes, the parable of the Samaritan woman. In this parable, Jesus promises life-giving water to the thirsty. The life-giving water that Jesus promises is the divine life of grace. Let us understand this through our daily life example. Haven't you seen canals through which water is bought from big rivers and big ponds to the areas of cultivation? Like in the picture shown, the water that flows through these canals water the plants. They grow and bear fruits. See, the first picture shown is a dry land and you can see that canals are dug on the land so that water could reach the plants. In the next picture, what do you see? The dry land has become green. The seeds planted have grown and they bear fruits. In the same way, Jesus promises life-giving water so that we become his children to eternal life. Look at this picture. Jesus is the source through which divine life flows to us. Sacraments are channels that bring us divine life. These channels flow from Jesus the source. Everything we do in the Catholic Church is rooted into what Jesus gave us. Sacraments are special sign of God's love and presence. The Syriac word for sacrament is kudasha. It means sanctifying act. Sacraments sanctify us by forgiving us our sins and giving us divine life. It is through the sacraments that a person enters into a relationship with Jesus and the life of the church. Let us understand each of these sacraments in brief. Firstly, the sacrament of initiation. Baptism. Baptism is seen as a sacrament of an admission to the faith, bringing sanctifying grace to the person being baptized. In the Catholic Church, the baptism of infants is the most common form. A person is to be baptized only once in their lifetime. In the rite of baptism, the holy water is usually sprinkled or poured on the forehead by the priest who brings the Trinity into one with the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This sacrament is understood as a requirement for salvation. The importance of this sacrament is it makes you an official member of your parish family. The second sacrament, Eucharist or Holy Communion is another sacrament of initiation and can be received daily if desired. It is the central rite of the Catholic worship. During the Mass, the priest consecrates the bread and wine, the elements of the Eucharist, which is converted into the body and blood of Christ. The congregation then shares the sacred meal. The importance of this sacrament is that the Eucharist feeds our soul. We receive Jesus within us. We believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Confirmation The third sacrament of initiation is confirmation, which serves to confirm a baptized person in their faith. A bishop or priest normally performs this rite, which includes the laying on of hands, in prayer and blessing and anointing the forehead with the holy oil with the words be sealed with the gifts of the holy spirit in so sealing this person 
as a member of the church. The outward rite of confirmation is the inward presence of the Holy Spirit, who is believed to provide strength to live out a life of faith. The importance of this sacrament is it strengthens us in faith and brings us closer to God. Now let us learn about the next set of sacraments, the sacrament of healing. Like the word says healing, we can understand that the purpose of this sacrament are to heal people who are sick and those seeking forgiveness from Christ. Penance. The sacrament also known as confession or the sacrament of reconciliation is seen as an opportunity for renewal and can be done as often as needed. Some Catholics participate weekly before receiving the Eucharist, while others may seek the sacrament only twice, that is before Easter and before Christmas. Reconciliation is asking sorry or pardon from God for the sins that they have committed. This sacrament shows God's love and brings back the sinner in communion with God and the life of the church. During this rite, sins are recounted privately to the priest who is seen as a healer aiding in the process and the priest commonly assigns acts of penance such as a specific prayer. A prayer of contrition is offered at the end of the confession. The importance of this sacrament is it helps us to reconcile to God through confession of one sins, repentance and penance. Anointing of the sick. This is a sacrament that is administered to give strength and comfort to the ill and to mystically unite their sufferings with that of Christ during his passion. The sacrament can be given to those who are afflicted with serious illness, those seeking surgery, to ill people, to the weakened elderly or to ill children who understand their importance. A person can receive this sacrament as many times as needed. The rite can be performed at a home or a hospital by the priest who prays over the person and anoints their head and hands with the holy oil. The importance of this sacrament is it is meant to offer physical, mental and emotional healing through Christ. Now let us understand the sacraments of service. These sacraments strengthen our desire to serve God and the church. Holy order or ordination is a sacrament that is available only to laymen who are being ordained as deacon, priest or bishops. As with baptism and confirmation, the sacrament is said to convey a special character on the soul of the recipient. During this rite, which is performed during a special Sunday Mass, a prayer and a blessing is offered as the bishop lays his hands on the head of the deacon being ordained. The importance of this sacrament is it is the laying on of hands and the passing on of the authority of the apostles. Next we see marriage. Marriage is a sacrament that a baptized man and a baptized woman administer to each other through their marriage vows and lifelong partnership. This Catholic sacrament marriage reflects the union of the Christ with that of the church as his mystical body. The rite commonly takes place during a holy mass with the priest serving as the minister of the mass and as a witness to the mutual consent of the couple. The marriage union is used to sanctify both the husband and the wife by drawing them into a deeper understanding of God's love and raise children within the teachings of the church. The importance of this sacrament is it serves it is a service that binds two people, a man and a woman as one. Now we have understood each sacrament and their importance in our life. The purpose of these sacraments given by God to us is so that we can lead a holy life. It is through these sacraments we enter into a relationship with God. At each stage of a Christian life, that is from birth, to death, Jesus gives us the grace to grow in divine life 
and to carry out several ministries in the church throughout the sacraments. Receiving these gifts with due devotion and proper preparation, let us grow in grace. Let us now see what the scriptures have to say about the sacraments. The seven sacraments celebrated by the Catholic Church all have their root in the scriptures. There are many references to baptism. Of course, beginning with Jesus' baptism by John. We see it in Luke chapter 3 verse 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, the heavens were opened. The Eucharist, which was instituted by Jesus at the Last Supper. We read it in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 29. Take, eat. This is my body. This is the blood of my covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of their sins. Confirmation. Though not specifically named in the Bible, it is traced back on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Jesus at the baptism. We read it in the Gospel of John chapter 20 verse 22. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Sacrament of Reconciliation While not practiced in the same way as it is practiced now, but it is rooted in Jesus' ministry of forgiving the sins and proclaiming salvation to the lost. After his resurrection, he breathed to his disciples, imparting with the Holy Spirit and stating, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. We read it in John chapter 20, verse 23. The sacrament of anointing of the sick can be seen in the New Testament. Letter of James chapter 5, verse 14. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with the oil in the name of the Lord. As we are reaching to the end of the session, let us remember this word of God and practice in our daily life. John chapter 4 verse 14 Those who drink the water that I will give will never be thirsty. Let us conclude with a prayer. Lord, we thank you for teaching us about sacraments, about the invisible grace you give to us. We look forward for a better tomorrow with you and all the wonderful things that you will teach us. Glory be to the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.